good to be with you guys. Uh, please grab your Bibles if you have them, and let's uh, begin our adventure this evening. Uh, so in the last, uh, I think literally the last five or six months, I've been coming here specifically and talking about how to grow in hearing the voice of the Lord and how important it is that you actually become a people that recognize God's voice. Uh, we actually do know that in Scripture it tells us that um, his sheep hear his voice, and yet even though that's a statement that's actually true, you actually didn't come to salvation unless you heard the Lord call you, most of the body of Christ is struggling with relational hearing, and so I feel like the Lord has been kind of encouraging me that it's very important to help people develop an ease in hearing the voice of the Lord. So what we've been doing is we've been talking about the scriptures that talk about it and then different ways that God speaks. And now we're this evening going to work on the idea that God wants to give you dreams. So if you have your Bible, like I told you, please turn with me to Job chapter 33. Job 33. Now, not to get too in the weeds with uh, history and stuff like that, because that usually bores people to tears, but you do need to know this. What we say is the oldest scripture is the book of Job. So when men first started putting down the information on God speaking, Job was the first one to write something. Even though when Moses wrote the first five books of the Old Testament, he started with the beginning of all things and took it up to the time when he was alive, Job was the first one that penned scripture, however he did it. Most scripture was what they called oral tradition that was passed from generation to generation. Job was the first one that actually recorded it. So why am I choosing Job? Well, it actually gives clear information about this topic. And also it shows you, so think about this with me. The very first people after the creation of Adam, they're describing relationship with God, and that's what Job is doing. And he's telling you this is how God communicates. So this is how God has planned it all along. And so in verse 14 through 18, and just to get you in the proper context, this isn't Job talking about this. This is one of the accusers that came, you know, his friends who became accusers. They're telling uh, Job about God's voice. And so this must have been common with the people that were walking with the Lord. This is how they understood the voice of God. It says this, For God does speak, now one way, now another, though man may not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision at night, when deep sleep fall on men as they slumber in their beds, he may speak in their ears and terrify them with warnings, to turn them from wrongdoing and to keep him from pride and his life from perishing by the sword. So uh, this idea where it says God speaks one way or now another, this is what we would call the multifaceted way that God speaks. We realize that we can hear God through vision, still small voice, angelic encounters, and dreams. And that's what we're covering here. Also, he says, the problem isn't with God speaking. The problem has never been that. God has no problem speaking. The problem has been men and women don't recognize it. So it actually means, first, you need to take away from that idea that the voice of God speaking to mankind must be common because the issue, it doesn't say, now God hardly ever speaks, so maybe once in a generation someone will hear the voice of the Lord. He's saying, God is speaking the problem isn't on that side. The problem is man isn't perceiving it. So it means it's men are hearing the voice of the Lord without recognizing that's God. Now, if you weren't with us here the last several months, when we talk about God speaking, outside of an audible voice or an angelic encounter, how do we mostly hear the voice of God? It's what we call God gives us his thoughts, God's thoughts. And if you like looking at references, that's what we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 when it talks about words of knowledge and words of wisdom. That word for word in the original language means a thought that becomes a word or a thought that becomes a word of wisdom. And so please remember, God is giving us his thoughts just like the enemy gives us his thoughts. And what happens is, is because people don't know the way the universe has been set up, they perceive everything's coming out of their own heart and God is telling you the truth of how this stuff from the supernatural realm communicates. It comes as thoughts. All right, now with that being said, look closely at the passage with me. It says, so in a dream. 
So God speaks, and he speaks in a dream. There are two ways, for your benefit, that dreams are talked about in Scripture. One of them is tied to the concept of hope. So we actually use this kind of language in the day and age we live in, don't we? We say, wouldn't it be great to win the lottery? That would be like a dream come true. So we use the idea as dreams are hope fulfillment. That's actually how Scripture uses them. Now to give you a contrast to show you this, it says this about hope in Scripture. It says, for the righteous, their hope will satisfy them. For the wicked, it proves to be vain. So this is important. Dreaming means that God is going to show you what he intends for you. That restores hope, and you can look towards the future. You can dream with God about the future and expect the blessing of the Lord. That will sustain you. Man's view of the future, it's vain. It doesn't have power to do anything, and so it, it causes people to come into despair. So you need to understand that when it uses the term dreams, there's two ways that the Old Testament and the New Testament talk about it. This one, it's talking about dream as a category of God speaking. And then look what it says right after that. It says, in a vision at night. Now, let's just stop right here and have a conversation. The term vision, when we were covering visions last month, please remember that that term, first and foremost, doesn't mean seeing a picture in your mind. It's a term for encounter. So God wanted to give a distinction to his presence and him encountering people, so he picked a word, and it was called vision. So if you look up the definition for the word vision, it doesn't mean communication as much as it means perceiving or being encountered by the Spirit of the Lord. And he uses it very specifically. He says, God speaks in dreams. How would we know I got a dream from the Lord? Well, the, the Bible terms it as a vision at night. In fact, that language is used through the whole Old Testament. So people say, I had a dream, and then they describe it as a vision at night. So what does that mean? A dream from the Lord is unique because God encounters you while you're sleeping, not just with information, his presence. So that's the distinction. I go to groups all the time when we have to cover this, and people, uh, one person ended up telling me one time, I believe every dream is from the Lord. And I said, so you believe that if you had a nightmare, that was from the Lord? And it's like, yes. And I'm like, well, here, here's a problem we have with that. We realize that we're wired supernaturally to encounter the supernatural, both Satan's kingdom, uh, Satan's rule and reign, and God's kingdom. And so because of that, you have to begin to test and weigh where did these thoughts, these images, these feelings come from. Here, this is telling you, you can actually know it's the Lord because of the encounter of God's presence while you're sleeping. All right, and then he says this, which most people wouldn't understand that. He says, when deep sleep fall on men as they slumber in their bed. Now, how many of you, when I say that, and you're just thinking off the top of your head, is that talking about REM sleep here? So if I have REM sleep, I'll encounter God too. This is another fun term uh, here in this passage, why this is such a good reference point, is because he's talking about dreams, what they're described from God's perspective, and then he's laying out categories of dreams. So there's, ready, depths to dreams. There's dreams where you, was that the Lord? And then you, there are other dreams in Scripture, like with, if you look at the dream that Solomon had when the Lord came to him about ruling his people, it was like he was almost in an awakened state while God was speaking to him when he was asleep. So when in this term, deep sleep is used, it's the term that was used when he was talking. Uh, do you guys remember when God was making a covenant with Abraham and he said a deep sleep came on him? God wasn't making him go to sleep to have nice REM sleeps. That's the, that's the Hebrew term for trances in the Old Testament. So God had Abraham basically fall down into a biblical trance and he used the term deep sleep. So he's saying you can have quality, different quality encounters while you're sleeping and God is giving you dreams. So here's a good place to remember something. You guys ready? Any type of encounter you can have while you're awake, you can have while you're asleep. So whatever God does to you while you're awake, right, he can do to you while you're asleep. Why is that? It's because your soul never sleeps. Your body might sleep, but your soul is actively functioning all the time. So it, it's the perfect reception for you to hear from God. So that actually means, like, when you guys are doing stuff during the day and you ask the Lord to speak to you, 
when you go to sleep, you should be asking the Lord to speak to you. So I don't know how to, what to do here, Lord. Would you speak to me while I'm asleep? I think it actually, do you guys agree with this? I actually think it saves time. I mean, you're going to have to sleep anyway, so you might as well be encountered by the Lord, get some wisdom, information, transformation, those kind of things. Now, what I want to do is I want to take another scripture. Would you guys look with me real quick at Proverbs 25, verse 2. Proverbs 25, verse 2. <clears throat> Help me real quick. I, I'm sorry. I, I, for life me, you're not looking at me, but I'll get your attention here in a second. Christy? I'm sorry I forgot your name already. Do you have a son? Okay, so while you were doing worship, I actually saw, it was kind of interesting. I saw the Spirit of the Lord come on you, and then I saw you put your hand on your daughter, and I was asking the Lord, well, what does that represent? And, he, and the Lord was just kind of pointing out to the fact that you've set your daughter in order, and she's in a stable place. But I saw the Spirit of the Lord, immediately the Lord said, yeah, but I want to show you something in her son's life right now. And I went, oh, okay, well, what, what's that? And it's that... Um, God wants to assure you of something, of him moving in his life, that the Spirit of the Lord, he's, a, he's reflective and he thinks a lot about stuff and that's who he is as a kid, but the Spirit of the Lord's going to actually draw near to him and start releasing wisdom to him. And God wants you to be comforted by that in the next season that he's going to in his life. All right? So his name? Can we pray for Alex real quick? Holy Spirit, would you draw near Alex right now? And I, we see your kind intention towards him. Would you release wisdom to him? An impartation of wisdom for the age that he's at. And I bless that. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. All right, hopefully that gave you enough time to turn to Proverbs 25, verse 2. Did you guys turn there while I was doing that? As everyone looks at me. So usually what I do is I go through this long thing on dreams, types of dreams and stuff like that, but I want to just kind of cut to why God talks to us the way he does in dreams because these are the questions I get a lot from people. Like, when I ask God to give me a dream, I have dreams about loaves of bread falling down hills and horses jumping over people's heads, and I get kicked in the head by a banana. <laughs> and that's supposed to be from God, right? So let's answer a question here. Why is it when you ask God to speak to you, does God come to you and speak in symbols and mysteries? Well, it fulfills what we see here in Proverbs 25, verse 2. Look at it with me. Hello. So, good. So, let's, let's ask a question. You and I are created to experience and enjoy the glory of God. Also, when God does certain things, he actually says, I'm tying the concept of my glory being in the midst of this. So when God saves somebody, it reflects the glory of God. When God heals somebody, it reflects the glory of God. Well, look right here in this passage of Proverbs. It says this. It is the glory. My Guys, you have to forgive me. I have a brand new phone, and it is fighting with me, so pray. Yeah, be healed in the name of Jesus. So it is the glory of God to what? To conceal a matter. All right? To search out a matter, it is the glory of kings. And so God is saying he loves coming to individuals and speaking mysteries to them. So why would that reveal, reveal the glory of God? Because people that are made in the image of God, when they begin to seek God out, they not only gain wisdom, they tap into God's glory and it satisfies God that he actually gives you mysteries and that you seek them out. By the way, how many of you like mystery movies or mysteries in general? You ever sat around and thought, Where, why did I even have that interest? It's because you're, you, you're wired to be fascinated by things. And so a lot of times, I, tell me if you guys are like this. I have people coming up to me all the time and go, why doesn't God plainly tell me what he wants me to do? Have you ever had someone say that to you? And that, actually, the children of Israel said that to God all the time. And so, get this, the children of Israel come to God one time, and they just yell at the Lord, just tell us what you want us to do, right? Four million of them yelled at God to tell him what he wanted to do. And so, <coughs> excuse me, what did God do? He came down in fire and lightning and surrounded the mountain, and he spoke audibly to them, and they said, don't ever do that again. You go hear from the Lord. So, 
men say they want something from God and God's wisdom. He knows the best way to do stuff. So think about this. If God comes to you in a dream and veils it through symbolism and in a mystery, it's for your betterment. It's not to make you frustrated. I had this lady <laughs> in a small group in Kansas City, and I'd talk about dreams and stuff like that, and people would say, hey, help me interpret my dream, and we'd do this. And she watched this for a couple months, and then she came up to me and she goes, I kind of hate your group. I always like when people start that way. I kind of hate your group. I'm like, well, that's a blessing. And so what's the problem? She goes, well, it seems like everybody here just has dreams all the time. And she goes, I don't think I've ever had a dream from the Lord. And she says, not only am I disgusted with you, I'm disgusted with the Lord. And I said, well, do you want dreams? And she's like, yes. And I go, great, I'm going to pray for you, and you're going to have dreams. She's like, great. She didn't believe me, but we prayed for her. Spirit of the Lord ministered to her. I knew she was going to get dreams. So she comes back the next week, and she, I love how people do this. She says, could you please pray for me again? And I said, what's the problem? She said, I have been having so many dreams. I don't know what they mean, and I'm not getting sleep at night. So could you pray for the Lord not to give me dreams? <laughs> Aren't we fun as individuals? All right, so... You guys ready? God wants to begin to take you on an adventure. So let me, let me introduce a concept here to you real quick about, it's just a basic principle on the voice of the Lord. If you don't have these, it's not that God doesn't want to give you. Sometimes God wants to see if you really want them, and he waits for you to ask. So you do not have because you do not ask. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go through categories of dreams just to kind of show you what is God willing to talk to us about in dreams. Now, I'm just reflecting to you. The scripture talks about this. I'm not going to go over each scripture or you guys would be overwhelmed. I'm just going to give you, this is what we see in scripture and this is what people talk about. So you guys ready? You can have a dream where you actually come into a worship service or worship the Lord in a dream. Uh, I've had many people talk to me about that. Intercession. You, now remember, anything you can do with the Lord during the day, you can do while you're asleep in a dream God can encounter. You can intercede for things while you're sleeping and God can give you a dream about that. Warfare, you can actually participate and fight with, and I know most of you in this room really like this, you can actually fight with demons while you're asleep getting rest. Isn't that exciting? Okay, no one liked that. Let's keep moving on. Um, petition, uh, that's another form of prayer. God, you can actually petition God while you're asleep. There have been many times that I'm always fascinated by this. I'm actually waking up from a dream from the Lord, and I'm having this dialogue with God and telling him scriptures, and then when I'm waking up from it, I'm like, what is going on? So you can enter into your prayer time with the Lord while you're sleeping. Here's another one. Comfort. God can come and comfort you. Uh, okay, I'll stop and tell this one. Um, for some odd reason, when I came into the body of Christ, I could not understand the concept of grace. I mean, I could read it, and I saw the love of God, but I couldn't get it in my head what that actually looked like. And so I always felt condemned. I always felt like, you know, if I die tonight, I have no idea if I'm going to make it to heaven, all that kind of stuff. And, I, and, I, and so what, what did that produce in me? It produced in me to be extremely legalistic and pharisaical over myself and anybody that got around me. Now, could you imagine being around me if I was doing that? I mean, I just got over it a week ago. That was a joke. But so isn't this funny how God dealed, dealed with this? I'm, I'm, and I never, I, I, didn't, I knew that God spoke, but I most of the time didn't want to hear God speak because I thought all he was going to do was come and correct me because I was so awful. Do any of you guys ever feel that way? So I go to bed one night, and I have this dream. And in this dream, I, I'm looking towards heaven, and this uh, carpet that's rolled up in a uh, rolled up, starts coming from heaven, and I'm watching it unroll to my feet. And I'm like, well, that's different. And now I'm looking at the carpet, and as I'm going back up into the carpet, there's the Lord standing there. And the minute I saw his eyes, his love pierced my heart. And I broke in the dream and just kept telling the Lord how unworthy I was. And he didn't say, yeah, you're right, you're a piece of junk or any of that other stuff. He came to me and hugged me, and when he did, this deliverance started going on in my heart, and I could sense the, how God viewed his salvation towards me instead of struggling with it. He comforted me in a dream. 
All right, let's keep moving on. Uh, we find out that God can come to you in a dream. Let's see. He can warn you. Now, this is kind of interesting to me. So we found out in Job, it says that he warned you, he keeps you from pride, and he protects you. So what does this actually mean? It means that people are always like, well, what's the future going to be like? Well, let's just have a talk about your future and God, right? We, we have this idea that God knows everything and God knows the future because the scripture tells us he knows the end from the beginning. So we look at the future and we're like, oh, I don't know if it's going to be secure. I don't know what's going to be safe. Well, did you realize that God can come to you in a dream and start telling you about the future to actually warn you so that you know how to do things? All right, let's keep moving on. Uh, this one, uh, there's a couple more as we do this I really start getting into, so if I take off, please slow me down. God can actually speak to your relatives that aren't saved. So we actually have here in Matthew 27, verse 19, where uh, Pilate's wife is being told by the Lord about Jesus, and he's trying to warn Pilate, and he's not paying attention. Now, were you guys, if, how many of you pay attention to anything that's going on in the Middle East in regard to Christianity? Okay, so for the people that are, uh, if you guys have never heard this, there's this incredible move going on right now in those countries, but not by missionaries, but by the presence of the Holy Spirit. He's appearing to people, and they're coming to the Lord while they're asleep or awake. Could you imagine? In fact, I had met a lady that actually had the Lord appear to her. Her father was an imam, and here the Lord appears to her, and now she's saved in a, Islam, a, a Muslim family. I thought that was fascinating. And I said, well, who preached the gospel to you? And she said, no one. She said, I went to bed one night, and Jesus appeared to me, and he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and I got saved while I was asleep. <laughs> so this will save you some time, energy, and frustration. Where, where can you have a captive audience with any individual? While they're asleep, right? So stop witnessing to your family. Ask the Holy Spirit to go get them while they're sleeping. By the way, you're allowed to do that. Um, if, you, if I had said this and you've heard this before, I thought this was fascinating. Back in the 1960s in the United States, one of the biggest proponents of atheism was a lady named Madeline O'Hara. And most people don't realize that her son got saved by a dream. An angel appeared to him, took a sword, and pointed down to a specific scripture he woke up, went and looked at the scripture. When he did, the Holy Spirit convicted him of his sin, and he got saved. Now, I don't know about you, but think of how much witnessing he had probably already heard up to that point in his life, and God visited him by an angel in a dream and brought him to salvation. So, you guys ready? You have this captive audience. Everyone has to go to sleep every night, so just ask the Holy Spirit, hey, go get him. You know, I'm going to go take a nap, and while I'm doing that, would you bring him into salvation? You're allowed to do that, by the way. All right, the next one is this. We find out that God heals people in dreams. Now, my, my wife has allowed me to share this. I'll go ahead and do it. My wife has gone through a lot of abuse when she was growing up, and we would take her to counselors, and they would help to a certain point, but she'd always describe this fact that she couldn't get over this one thing of pain, even though she addressed it and repented. The Lord cleansed her. She just never felt like... And so what did God do? Uh, Kelly and I didn't even know this was possible. The Lord has this angel take her on this weird experience while she's asleep, and when she wakes up, she's whole. And I remember looking at her the next day. I could tell the Lord had done something with her, but she hadn't told me what was going on in her heart. And I'm looking at her, and I'm saying, there's something, what happened to you last night? She goes, that issue that what, it's like we could never get close to, the Lord healed it. And I'm like, well, how did he do it? And he said, well, this angel took me up to this wall and said, you're making it harder than you need to be. Just go around it. And when he said that to her, the healing presence of the Lord hit her soul, and he restored her. I mean, wow. Um, that's pretty powerful. And I know a lot of people that have had the Lord physically touch them while they're asleep or spiritually touch them while they're asleep, it, teal with some issue in their soul. Um, let's see. Two more. You can get guidance, which means, you know, I don't know what to do in this situation. God is the problem solver. He can tell all this to you. You can have God prophesied to you while you're asleep. By the way, I, I, I'll give you the reference point to this. 
Genesis 37, verse 5, Joseph has the Lord literally prophesy by giving him these dreams about corn and sheaves and all and the sun and the moon and stuff like that. He's prophesying to him. And, and, that, and, you know, Job, I'm sorry, Job, Joseph is like all of us, right? God speaks to us, and we don't know how to weigh it or be quiet about it. We have to tell everybody, hey, were you aware of the fact that God said that all of you are going to bow down to me? I mean, that doesn't win friends and influence people at all. But he was experiencing it for the first time, and so he didn't know how to handle it or deal with it. But here, that word was fulfilled. God actually had done that to him and prophesied to him in a dream. All right, so what is the purpose? We're going to wrap it up. What's the purpose of dreams? Ready? First one is this, for God to impart his presence and his glory to you. The next one is this, is so that you understand the way that as God's, God as a father loves his children, he does these things that we see him as supernatural or powerful they're common to him because he cares for you. So God wants to come and nurture you while you're asleep. God wants to come and impart things to you while you're asleep. There have been many times that I knew I've been encountered by the Lord in a dream and had no idea of the content of it when I woke up, but knew several months later that thing that was released to me came when God ministered to me in a dream. So I'm grateful that the Lord is able to do this. And what my goal here now is going to be to pray that God reinitiates this and awakens this in your life. So how many are you are having dreams now and you know you are from the Lord? How many are you having that? How many of you have never had a dream and want God to knock and rock your world? How many want to have that? One person. Great. Okay. So for the rest of you, I'm just going to pray that God will do this for you. Okay. So would you just uh, pray with me for a moment? All right, Lord, so come on, we both knew this was going to be here. You talked to me about this. So would you come with your power and your presence to each person? And we know from your scripture that you do more than we ask or imagine. So I ask that you would impart right now dreams. Just come to us and give us your wisdom and love while we're sleeping. And this, this thing where sometimes we don't understand this is available to us, awaken this to us again, Lord. And uh, just let that river come forth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, help me with your name. Laura? Lori, would you stand for a moment, please? Uh, so... The Lord wanted me to just encourage you. Uh, I thought it was uh, kind of him to restate this. So your main motivational gift is serving. Serving. And he wanted me to talk to you about his pleasure over you. So this is important that you understand. You probably already know this, but God wants to tell you this again tonight to affirm it. You are pleasing before the Lord. And I actually saw the Lord, he told me, now get her ready for this. So for the next season coming up in your life, you're going to experience the love of God in a, what's called a tangible way. And what it's going to be is the kindness of the Lord is going to refresh you. So could I pray for that for you? Holy Spirit, would you come right now and would you release the kindness of your tangible presence and love upon her? And um, just any weariness that has been upon her, over the next last season. I break the power of that right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and I ask that your tender mercy would bless her. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you. And your name, Nathan? Sorry guys, I, okay, so Nathan, are you ready? So um, he actually told me to encourage you to pray a prayer to him because he wants to answer it, so I'm going to tell you what it is. Are you ready? I thought this was a weird way of doing it. God is wanting to restore back to you the zeal and the power you had as a younger man, and he wants you to start asking for it again because he's planning on giving it to you. Does that make any sense to you? So just put your hands out like it's Christmas. Here we go. 
Holy Spirit, would you come right now and bring your power and your presence over your son? And, you know, Lord, zeal, because you usually just give it and we, we, don't, we think it's just what it's about, Ze release the anointing of zeal back in his soul and power so that he can go about what he's doing on this planet with your presence on him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in, I'm sorry, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. All right, let's see. So I had a word for a gentleman named Phil. Is there a Phil here or someone, anybody know a person named Phil? Okay, so here's what's fun. If you guys have ever done this, uh, here's how cute Jesus is with this stuff. Sometimes I'm like, did I really, that person's not here, so I must have bit the dust. And then later, after we release it on video, someone's like, that was me. So I'm going to release this, okay? So Phil, here's what the Lord told me to tell you. You've been weary, and he's going to increase his strength, and, and there's a cleansing that coming to your soul, and God is going to lift off you weariness. And you're going to find that the strength and resurrection power is going to come to you again. And so I just bless that. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. All right, let's do another one. Is there a Robert, Robert here? Robert. I knew it was you. No, I'm not, I'm not kidding. I looked at you and I said, who do you want me to call out? And the Lord said, Robert. And then he showed me your face. So would you stand, Robert, please? Okay, Robert, there's a leadership call on your life. And God is saying that he is going, this is a season where he is going to release favor to you. And he told me to tell you this specifically. The favor is going to come at your workplace and God is going to break something over you and there's going to be a financial release over your life for the thing that God is wanting to do for you. Does that make any sense to you? Okay, so just put your hands out like it's Christmas. Holy Spirit. Bring your power and your presence right now. Okay, so those words that have been spoken over you that's caused discouragement, I break the power of those right now in the name of Jesus. And we just come into agreement with you, Jesus, here on earth. Your intention here is for your son to flourish. So let favor be released on him right now, and I command blessing over what he puts his hands to in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Robert. All right, let's move to the next one here. If you have pain in your left ankle, so you have left pain in your ankle, left or right, even though I had left, I know this for both, left or right uh, ankle, if you have problems with that part of your body, stand, the Lord wants to minister to you. Isn't that nice of me to say that? Because if they have pain... So does anyone have any pain in their ankles? You. Wow, okay. So you're already standing, so don't fall over. Holy Spirit, release your power and your presence right now. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. I'm actually seeing like it looks like an x-ray, and there's just this, this inflammation around where your ankle connects to the the. the bones in your feet. So Holy Spirit, come to that place right now. And I break the power of this inflammation and pain, and I command the swelling to stop in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for your goodness, Lord. Now restore, Cliff, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, if you're dealing with sinus problems, would you stand? The Lord wants to minister to you. Sinus problems. So if you don't know what a sinus problem is, that's like allergies. That's like junk going on with your nose. I mean, just any of that kind of stuff. So one person. Okay. Oh, I finally got two. I feel better. Three. Oh, no, just two. So you guys ready? I'm sorry. I'm having fun with you guys too much. Please put your hands out. Let's be serious. All right. Holy Spirit, would you come right now, release your healing power. And it's really in the, the nose and the sinus areas. Just release your healing presence over this part of their body right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus.
Now restore them. So as the body of Christ, we come together and we declare this. No weapon formed against you will prosper. We command restoration to come to your body right now. We ask you, Lord, fulfill your word to them. Restore your benefits. You will heal all their diseases. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thanks, guys. All right, I was going to sit down, but if you guys know how this works, that never happens. So, Tim, uh, there's a transition coming towards you, and the same word that I gave to him, the Lord is giving it to you in the arena of money specifically. And so get ready for God to do a transition financially in your life. Uh, it's that season for that to happen. So Holy Spirit, come and just minister your power and your presence over them. I command you to bless them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up now. Do you need to make any announcements? Just food? Okay, so after this, if you actually like food, they're going to be serving food. All right, so please stay. That's why it's called Saturday Night Supper Club. Please stay. I don't know what's on the menu, but I'm sure it's good. I'm sorry? Oh, okay. So chicken and all the stuff that goes with it. It's how, okay, okay. Thank you. Jo thank you, Joanne. So Joanne did that, so it would probably be really good. All right. Now, I brought um, some people with me that are going to pray for you guys like we did last month. So for these three guys, if you need to be encouraged with a word from the Lord, they're going to stand right here. If you need to, so you guys can make your way over here if you want. If you need physical healing, I'll be over here. If someone wants to join me, I'll be more than happy to do that with them. But for the rest of you, I'm going to dismiss you. And then um, please receive the blessing of the Lord. All right. So Lord, bring your presence upon us. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face to you and give you rest. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.